Hey, everyone. Good evening. Nice to meet you all. Um, all right. So I'm just going to use... I'm going to use the keyboard. I'm old school. Uh, so my name is Ash Al-Hashim. Um, I'm vice president of sales at a company called Scaled Inference in Palo Alto, California. Uh, we're an artificial intelligence company. Um, I've been in the AI and optimization space for the last six or so years. And uh, before that, I worked and went to school right here in Columbus, Ohio. So it's great to be back home. All right. Uh, so the purpose of tonight's talk. I'm going to uh, give you an introduction, an overview of how e-commerce businesses are leveraging reinforcement learning, a form of artificial intelligence, to improve conversion rates uh, much more efficiently and intelligently than what was possible before through previous methods. Um, in order to do that, uh, the agenda here, I'm going to give you a, uh, first uh, an introduction to what reinforcement learning is, uh, how it differs from kind of your traditional uh, artificial intelligence. I'm going to talk a little bit about the state of optimization today. And then I'm going to wrap up with how revenue optimization uh, via reinforcement learning really works. All right, to set the stage, uh, I want to give a quick intro to what AI, what our, uh, reinforcement learning really is. So AI can be cl uh, classified into three distinct branches, uh, supervised machine learning, unsupervised machine learning, uh, which we won't really be discussing today. It's uh, a little bit out of scope, and it's not as commonly adopted by uh, businesses as much as uh, supervised machine learning, and then reinforcement learning. Uh, so the vast majority of AI, when you hear AI used in a business or academic sense, typically what you're, t what you're uh, hearing about is uh, supervised machine learning. And at its core, what supervised machine learning really is, is a way to teach a machine something by giving it a really, really large data set and a bunch of human-generated feedback about how to make sense of that data. Um, so I like to use the game of chess as an example. Uh, in order to train a computer how to play chess with supervised machine learning, what you would do is you would feed it a ton of games. Uh, play it at, say, like the grandmaster level, like the highest level of chess. And it would figure out by learning the rules and learning what successful outcomes uh, it happened by playing certain moves, it will figure out over time uh, how to play really, really well. You also want to give it, uh, hand wire it, and tr some training around things like tactics and st uh, strategy, like dominating the center, pawn development. I don't know how many chess nerds there are here, so I'll stop there. Uh, but, but basically, uh, you can teach a machine uh, through human feedback and a ton of data. Uh, and with the right algorithms and enough data, um, the machine can then play at the grandmaster level. It can even beat the world's best chess champions. That's what happened in the late 90s when IBM's Deep Blue beat Garry Kasparov. In the world of business, uh, which is why we're all here tonight, uh, companies use supervised machine learning for a variety of things. Um, to uh, explain the past, to predict the future. A couple common use cases of supervised machine learning is companies will often use uh, machine learning to predict and prevent fraud. So it'll take a look at a uh, it'll take a look at uh, previous uh, examples of fraud and look for similar attributes to future purchases. And then based on, hey, there's a lot of similarities to an old fraudulent uh, uh, transaction that resulted in a chargeback. Let's cancel this order before it happens, save ourselves some money and some headache. Um, Self-driving car companies will also use supervised machine learning um, to basically uh, help their software drive cars. So they'll have self-driving car companies will have like armies of people just sitting behind computer screens, uh, labeling the, the the images that come back from the car companies, uh, from the cars themselves, uh, and label things like you know that's a stop sign, that's a cat, that's a taxi, don't hit that. Uh, so the goal of this is to make sure that these cars using AI are driving safely and effectively. Now. A limitation of supervised machine learning is that you do need a massive amount of data, and you need a ton of resources in the way of machinery and humans to sit there and label data uh, in order to make it work. So for some problems, human knowledge, and for some businesses, uh, human knowledge may be too expensive or unreliable to, to make it actually work. So as a result of this, a long-standing ambition of artificial intelligence researchers has been to figure out a way to train machines without the need for human intervention and human feedback. And that's really where uh, reinforcement learning comes into play. 
So reinforcement learning is a machine learning technique that enables a machine to learn it for, uh, in an interactive environment by trial and error using feedback from its own actions and experiences. So inputs will lead to outputs, and the machine learns and adapts based on whether or not a reward was attained. Think about it from the perspective of an e-commerce store. If the reward is a person checking out and purchasing your product, that is good. The machine will do more of the thing that led to that action happening. Going back to the example of chess, but this time taking a reinforcement learning approach rather than a supervised machine learning approach, the machine will learn how to play the game without any study of human play previous games whatsoever. All uh, a reinforcement learning powered machine will need in order to learn how to play chess well is knowledge of what the rules are, and that's it. It'll just start playing itself over and over. And if, initially, it starts at a very naive level, right? Um, it will know, it'll be very, very basic, make a lot of blunders and errors. But over time, it gets better and better and better and better. And because the, what's really cool about this is because the machine has a sparring partner that is always at its exact, its exact level of sophistication, it gets better very, very quickly. Um, and actually, an example of this is a few years ago, um, Google's AI division, DeepMind, uh, Deep uh, built a chess engine that used reinforcement learning. Uh, it taught itself how to play with just knowledge of the rules, again, no human intervention whatsoever. It taught itself how to play chess, and within four hours, it was able to beat the world's top chess engine uh, called Stockfish. Uh, it just obliterated Stockfish. And Stockfish had been built over like a decade using supervised machine learning, a ton of data, a ton of grandmasters teaching this thing how to play. It just absolutely destroyed it. Out of 100 games, it won 28, lost none, and played the rest to a draw. Kind of scary, but kind of cool for what it can do for business, too. So let's talk about that. All right, so I want to talk about uh, reinforcement learning in e-commerce, but bef uh, before I do that, I, I just kind of want to do a temperature check, um, a poll. So how many of you here are familiar with A-B testing? Raise your hand. Oh, good. All right. How many of you have run A-B tests either for your own store or if you're a consultant for your, cons for your clients? All right, good. Okay, and then how many of you who have run A-B tests have had successful outcomes that led to a positive impact on your metric? Uh, I'll, expl I'll explain A-B testing in just a second, but uh, just show of hands, successful outcomes. All right, wonderful. All right, so that's pretty representative of what, of what we're seeing. So A-B testing is uh, uh, it's basically this idea of pitting two different experiences against one another, A or B. Right? Uh, so you'll have two different versions of your website or a landing page uh, that you randomly send your traffic to. And then what you do is you measure the, uh, the conversion rate of each of those experiences in order to figure out all right, what experience is better. Should I show, you know, if you're running like an e-commerce shop in, based out of Williamsburg it's like, and you sell only cardigans and biker boots, um, do I show the cardigans or do I show the biker boots on my homepage? Right? What's going what's gonna to cause people to purchase more? Uh, it's a really powerful way to, uh, to grow your business and, and kind of measure and get insights from, uh, from, from your data, um, but it does take a lot of effort. And there's also some limitations with A-B testing. So I want to talk about that. So over the last decade or so, A-B testing has become much, much easier to run. There are a lot of great tools out there that allow uh, businesses, uh, smaller businesses, to run A-B tests. Um, but also with ease of running an A-B test comes kind of lower attention to detail and, and some diminishing returns. Uh, many sources in the field is, estimate that as many as 90% of tests end in what we call statistical ties or basically inconclusive, too close to call. So we don't know, is A better than B or B better than A? We don't really know. So you kind of basically waste all of the time that you invested in, in running this test. Uh, you know, A-B testing is hard. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's not going to work if you just kind of throw a bunch of ideas at a wall. And once the low-hanging fruit is gone, a lot of companies are finding out that A-B testing is just really, really hard to make pay off. All right. So I want to, before I dive into reinforcement learning, I want to take a moment to explain this concept of contextual wins. So one of the challenges with A-B tests is that you're limited to testing what experience you should show your customers that is going to be best on average. Right? Do I show chocolate or vanilla, cardigans or boots? Do I make my price $60 or $55? Uh, 
one, one of these things is gonna be better on average than the other, but it's, hard, but it's hard to get massive gains out of it because again, you're just dealing with what's best on average. So what reinforcement learning does that's very different from A-B testing and why it's so powerful is it enables this concept called contextual winners. So it's, not, it's basically experiences that are not necessarily better overall, but are better for certain segments of your population, right? Some people prefer chocolate over vanilla. Some people prefer boots over cardigans. It doesn't mean everyone does. If you can have a machine know when to show boots versus cardigans, chocolate versus vanilla, your conversion rates will skyrocket. And that's the whole idea behind this contextual winners, contextual segmentation of your audience. Um, an example I, I like to give, this is, this is a true story. I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but whenever my wife and I are about to order an Uber, we play this, we have this like little ritual where we both pull out our phones. I pull out my brand new iPhone, and she pulls out her janky four-year-old iPhone 6 or 6S or whatever. And we try to get, both get a quote. We plug in where we're going, we both get a quote. And without fail, her quote from Uber is always 20 to 30% lower than mine. So we always end up riding with her. Why do you think that is? Yes. She's got an old phone, and it's one of the reasons she won't get a new phone, because she keeps getting great deals on Uber. But Uber has a ton of machinery in place and a teams of data scientists that have done things like figure out what useful proxies for customer willingness to pay are, and then it'll price discriminate based on that information. It's a really, really smart way to use reinforcement learning to power kind of price personalization. So that's what I'm here to talk about today. It's this idea of personalizing discounts or personalizing experiences um, uh, by using reinforcement learning. So uh, let's take this example. And, and you know, businesses have tried to personalize or tailor discounts for a long time. It's just, it's really hard to do manually. Uh, number is like, who knows how to match willingness to pay to the ideal discount? And then also, even if you, let's say you've nailed it, it's really hard to maintain that over time. Your products change. Uh, your market changes, the advertising campaigns you're doing are bringing in different types of users. Who knows how to make it uh, kind of sustain or, uh, the effectiveness of your uh, discount strategy over time. So with RL, with reinforcement learning, this becomes actually a lot easier. So here's how it works. The idea is you basically feed the machine a few different discount options. You tell it what the metric that you're trying to improve is probably revenue, but it could be conversion rate, right? And you let it go. And what the machine does is it explores this infinite space of all possible segments that could, different ways to kind of group your audience, and it figures out which segments are actually meaningful enough and uh, are highly related to improving your metric in a way that not only does it figure it out, but it actually starts to route those types of users in the future to the experience that it knows it's gonna maximize your metric. So for example, in this kind of use case, um, if you have no discount, 5% off, or 20% off as the three discount options, the machine might figure out, and this is actually uh, inspired by some, some results we've seen with uh, some of our customers, that high income individuals, older individuals with a little more disposable income, you don't need to show them a discount. They're gonna buy anyway, just give them your product. However, someone's been on your uh, site a few times, they're just in a little bit of a cheapskate maybe, not, not purchasing, maybe waiting for some sort of uh, trigger to purchase, maybe you show them that 20% off and that's what gets them to buy. Again, the, the goal here is to always maximize your metric because at the end of the day, let's be honest, we can get a lot more conversions if we just give everyone 20% off, but that's not gonna be great for your bottom line either. So it's about matching, mapping that willingness to pay to, to the price point to maximize your earnings. Um, last example I'll give about this is a, a, a really cool one. Uh, so uh, who here is familiar with Teespring? A few people, okay, cool. So Te Teespring is an e-commerce platform. They do over 100 million in revenue. They're an early customer of ours. And you know they've had a rich optimization culture that's existed well ahead of working with us. They, do a ton, they were doing a ton of A-B testing. But they wanted to optimize for revenue. And, and you know th there are trade-offs whenever you're trying to optimize for something. So they were trying to figure out, do we, con do we ask users to continue to spend time looking around, maximize uh, average order value at the risk of card abandonment, or do we just rush them to the register and try to get them to check out as quickly as possible, maximize conversion rates, decreasing average order value? 
So they, they ran a reinforcement learning powered optimization project, uh, and what they learned was, or what the machine was able to learn, was this idea that anytime you see someone come to you from a large screen with a fast connection speed, encourage them to, show, to shop around. Anytime someone comes to you from a slow connection, or a small, uh, small uh, screen, probably their iPhone or Android phone, just get them to check out as quickly as possible. This little optimization project was able to result, uh, resulted in a 7% increase in conversion rate, as well as hundreds of thousands of additional dollars in revenue every month. Very simple, very easy to understand, uh, very, very powerful and effective way to, to improve your metrics. And, and the results of, uh, of reinforcement learning are pretty much consistent across the board when compared with A-B testing, just because of this idea of enabling contextual wins. It's not about just what's best on average, Reinforcement learning will find that too, but it's about finding what's on, on average better and what speaks to certain segments of your users even more powerfully. All right, so uh, Chase had a shameless plug. I'm a very shame-filled individual. I'll quickly plug uh, my company. We just launched an app on Shopify. Uh, it takes all the goodness of reinforcement learning. It kind of puts it into a little, a little box, a couple clicks. You can install this and try it out. Uh, we're giving a two-month giveaway, a uh, free trial for anyone who's here tonight and is interested. Just come by and find me. Uh, my email address is be on the last slide here. Um, it's, it's not the full power of our platform, but it does help you with discount optimization, kind of the use case I just mentioned. So, uh, in conclusion, all right, reinforcement learning. Uh, it's really changing the way experimentation and optimization works rather than running a whole lot more tests to get some wins. We're saying be smarter about running just a few tests, thoughtful experiments, you get a lot more out of it. Um, and you know, a lot of businesses are doing this. They're uh, using reinforcement learning to improve key metrics. Uh, and uh, yeah, now it's available for Shopify for you all to, to try out. So uh, thank you for your time. I think that's all.